Kate Cunningham was a late scratch in the Detroit Pistons' loss to the New Orleans Pelicans on Sunday. Should the Detroit Pistons consider just shutting him down for the season? We'll talk about that in today's episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. You are Locked On Pistons, your daily Detroit Pistons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's the deal? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. Per usual, I am your host, Kuka Hill. You can find me over on Twitter, at Kuka Hill. I want to thank you guys for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on our podcast platforms. And if you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel, at Locked On Pistons. Hit that subscribe button or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. And that's another great way to support the podcast. And today's episode is brought to you by Price Picks, the easiest, most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash lockdown NBA and use code all lowercase lockdown NBA for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. Later on, I want to talk about will any of the players that we just witnessed play in this game against the Pelicans, this loss against the Pelicans, will any of those players be on the roster next year? Is there a non-zero chance that every single player fans just watched will not be on the roster next year? We'll talk about that later. And also we'll briefly touch on. Should Pistons fans start being concerned about Cade asking out at any point? Uh, we'll briefly touch on that. Um, but the first thing we're going to talk about is Cade not playing in this game against the New Orleans Pelicans. He went through shoot around and was a late scratch to this game. Right before the game, uh, was notified that he would not be playing. Um, over the last two weeks or so, over the last like six or seven games, he's been popping up an injury report questionable with that knee injury. Or not knee injury, but I guess you I guess you call it knee soreness, or they, they're calling it left knee management. Um, he has missed one game due to it up to the back end of a back to back against Boston, but he's been playing through it. Um, but he's been showing up in the injury report every I'd say since I believe it's since the Toronto game. Um, he's been showing up in the injury report, either that or the Charlotte game. I forget which one it started at, but one of those two. Um, the Pistons now are in the final stages of the season. There's not many games to go. There are 12 and 59. There's 11 games left in this season. Should they just shut K down for the season? Should he? Should the end of K, should K Cunningham have his season ended right now? There's my answer depends on two different um, two different things, or I guess I have two different answers. I should say, um, if K is healthy. And this is something that I need everybody to consider. All Pistons fans need to consider this. If Kate actually is healthy and wants to play, let him finish this season out. Let him finish this season out. He'll get the 69 games played. That will be a, a hell of an improvement after not mi- playing basically at all last year. It would be the most games played in his career. If he's just sore and he wants to play, if he's not actually hurt, if he's just sore at this point in the season like everyone is, there's only 11 games left, let him finish this season out. He'll get to around 64 games or what, what, was, what did I say? 69 games played. Let him finish this season out. Get these reps in. Continue to get NBA basketball reps in. Again, people don't really realize that Cade doesn't even have two seasons worth of game experience in. He has about a season and a half, just about. So he needs these reps still, just like everyone else. He still needs these reps. So if he's healthy and can play and wants to play, let him finish this season out. That's first. If he is not healthy, if he is trying to play through something, if he's not 100%, if he's not near 100%, because I guess everyone's not 100% at this point in the season. Everyone's dealing with, like, soreness and whatever. But if he's, like, actually ailing, if, if there's something actually legit bothering him, then, okay, yes, go ahead and shut him down. Go ahead and shut him down. There's no reason for him to continue to, you know, uh, play through something like that, if that's the case. And – as we looked at and as we've been talking about over the last few episodes, ever since he started popping back up on the injury report with that left knee management, he's been struggling from the field. Over the last six games, he's shooting underneath 40% from the field um, after playing exceptional um, after the All-Star break and playing really well over the last two and a half, three months. Once he started popping back up on this injury report, last six games, he's shooting 38% from the field. So it's clear that, it, I mean, I don't want to speak for him. I don't want to speak for the team. I'm not a doctor, but I mean, it seems like it's directly correlated. As soon as he started popping back up on the injury report, he instantly started shooting worse. Like I, that's just, 
critical thinking at that point. So if it's actually something bothering him, if that's why he's struggling, if he's actually hurt, don't play him. But if this is just, and this is why I really wanted to get to, if this is just another season where guys are being shut down early because the Pistons are terrible and they want to make sure they get the top odds in the draft class again, like it has been the last four years. Like I, I'm again, I'm not going to speak for the team. I can only speak off what I understand and what, what I'm pulling away from this over the last few years. A lot of these guys that you saw the Pistons shut down at the end of the year, if the Pistons were not straight up trash and playing for the number one overall pick would have finished the season out. They would have played the end of the year. And some of these guys who don't have as many games played in their career, if the Pistons were not this bad and they weren't trying to get the first overall pick, there wouldn't be maybe as many concerns about games played at this point because a lot of them got shut down a little too early because of that at that time. So if that's what this is, if they're going to, if they're trying to shut him down, if they want, are they're considering to shut him down because of that? Absolutely not. If that's the reason for wanting to shut him down, 100%, absolutely not. I'm completely against that. This season is lost. You're going to probably end up with the top odds anyways. What's more important is getting your best player, your franchise player of reps, and letting him get game experience and continue to and, and let him end the season strong. Let him end the season strong. And, and you need to continue because it's not for sure that Ivy, that Duran, and I mean, maybe Duran doesn't play again the rest of the year. He's missed the last two games, but it's not for sure that those guys are gone. And if they're not gone, if they're not going to be gone this offseason, you need him to get reps with those guys. Those guys need to get reps with him still. Like, it may, there's no reason to shut him down for that reason. This is year four of a rebuild. Cade is in, his, in what is really his second season of his career. Let him get to near 70 games played if he wants to play and can play through his injury. Now, if he's actually hurt, again, like I said, send him out. No reason to risk him actually getting, like, legit injured at the end of a season like this. Just send him out, and it is what it is. So it, it, it just depends. If, if it's because he's hurt, yes, you should send him out, and it's over with. If he can play and wants to play and you're just setting him down because the team is trying to get the top overall pick and they and, and you know they're tanking it even worse than what they were before, if they're just straight up tanking, sitting guys out at the end of the year like they have in the last few years, absolutely not. Let them play. Absolutely let them play and close the season out. So, I mean, that's that's my quick thoughts on that. I think that it's as simple as that. If Kay is healthy and wants to play, let him play. Let him finish the season out. Let him finish it out strong. If he's actually hurt, sit him down. Simple as that to me. Um, let me know what you guys think about that, though. Comment section down below or over on Twitter at Kuka Hill. Should the Detroit Pistons shut K down already with 11 games left in the season? How do you guys stand in, in, the, in the topic of shutting guys down for the top pick at this point? Should they still be trying to do that? Should they just let everyone play? What, what do you guys think? Let me know all of that, again, in the comment section down below or over on Twitter at Kuka Hill. When we come back, the Pistons lost to the New Orleans Pelicans, and they were playing players that I don't think – I mean, I had a few of you guys tweet at me and say – I've never even heard of these guys before. I had a few of you guys DM me. I had a few comments on the YouTube section like, this is the first game I just haven't watched. I just I just did not tune in. Well, any have, is it possible that no player, not a single one that played in this game against the Pelicans will be on this roster next year? We'll talk about that when we come back. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood is the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from an other retirement account with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscriptions, fees apply now for some legal info. Claim as of quarter one, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match required. Robinhood go for one year from the data of 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years at 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Again, head over to Robinhood.com slash boost. Offer is good through April 30th. Again, at Robinhood.com slash boost. Now let me tell you about another one of our sponsors, eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, 
power or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you'll get your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay guarantee fit, only available to U.S. customers at ebaymotors.com. So I want to thank you guys again for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free to available on your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Lockdown Pistons. Hit that subscribe button or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. That's another great way to support the podcast. Uh, so the Pistons, I'm recording this right after their loss um, to the New Orleans Pelicans. By the way, Zion had 36 points, missing one shot in this game against the Pistons. He was 13 or 14 from the floor. Sheriff just dominated the Pistons. Um, the Pelicans about to be in fourth seed in the West. I think they might be going to the Western Conference Finals, but that's just me. Um, and this is without Brandon Ingram. But anyways, 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 back to the Pistons side. The Pistons were without Kay Cunningham. They were without Jalen Duran. They were without Stanley Mute. They were without Asar Thompson. They were without Taz Gibson. They were without Isaiah Stewart. They were without Quinn Grimes. They were without Simone Fontecchio. And that's the end of the list. So in this game, I tuned the game on for a little bit. Not going to lie to you guys. I did not tune into as much of this game as, as let's just say I wasn't as in tune to this game as I was other games of the year. I don't think many other fans were as well. But if you just look at the names that played in this game for the Detroit Pistons, I was watching the game and I tweeted this out. I was like, I seriously think there's a non-zero chance that not a single player that the Pistons are playing right now, the fans will see on the roster next year. There's a non-zero chance. Doesn't mean it's likely. Doesn't mean it's, 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 you know, guaranteed to happen. But I think there is a non-zero chance that every single player that just played in this Pelicans game is not going to be on the team next year. So let's talk about it. Let's go down the roster. Let's go, let's go throughout this and see how, if that's possible. So Buddy Beheim played 22 minutes in this game. Two-way player. I, I, I would assume he's not going to be on, on the roster next year. I don't think that's too crazy to think. Malachi Flynn. Don't think he'll be on the roster next year. I think that's pretty okay to think. Evan Fournier, who, by the way, only played nine minutes in this game, was not playing well. Um, I will not be on this roster next year. Jared Roden, I don't believe will be on this roster next year. Tosan, played 28 minutes, probably will not be on this roster next year. Troy Brown Jr. will not be on this roster next year. Chimenze Metu will not be on this roster next year. And now you get to the three guys that did play in this game that I think have the most likely chance of being on the roster next year. And that is James Wiseman, Jay and Ivy, and Marcus Sasser. So will those guys all be on the team next year? Now, again, remember, this is not, this is not me saying – that it's likely that the that, that every single player here is not going to be on the team next year. This is simply saying, is it a non-zero chance? Is there a realistic chance they may not be on the roster next year? And I'm going to arrive at the conclusion of, yes, there is a legit chance that not a single one of these players are going to be on the team next year. First, let's talk about James Wiseman. James Wiseman is entering a team option this offseason. I don't believe they're going to bring him back. Um, I do think that he'll get an offer from another team. I don't think his career is over, but this team – as like is very known and has been talked about a, a, like ad nauseum, this team is going to have to be better next year significantly, like make massive changes, I believe, everywhere. And they are under pressure to win and be much, much better next year. And bringing back James Wiseman, who, yes, maybe improved from the beginning of the season as your primary backup big when you're in a season of we have to win more games, don't think that's very smart. Like, let Wiseman go somewhere else. He'll get a decent contract somewhere else. I think probably like eight to $12 million a year, somewhere like a little bit less than back we got from the Pistons a few years ago, I think. Um, he's improved a little bit from the beginning of the season, no doubt. Like, let him go. You help launch his career, I guess, springboard his career forward. So let him go somewhere else. But no, I, I think the Pistons are going to be in the market for a backup big, um, a name that we'll talk about, obviously, free agency soon. 
at the end of the season. Um, but a name, I guess I'll just throw out there that I've seen a lot of Pistons fans talk about, I think actually would be a really good signing, Isaiah Hardenstein. I think that's a name that you should be on the lookout for this offseason for the Pistons. Um, but, yeah, I don't think they're going to be bringing back James Wiseman. He's just, again, team option, $12.1 million. Um, no, I don't think they're going to bring him back. Um, so, yes, that's so that now that leaves two players. And these two players are Jane Ivey and Marcus Sasser. So, obviously, Marcus Sasser is under contract for the next four years. Jane Ivey is under contract for the next three years. Um, now, these two guys are obviously the most unlikely ones to be moved. And I'm not sitting here betting money that they are going to be off the roster next year. But, again, the whole point of this this topic, this segment, is is there a non-zero chance all of them are off the team? Is it is there is there a realistic pathway where all of these players are not on the team? Marcus Sasser, I don't think he's a priority. I think he's a he's a he was a fine late round pick. He's shown some stuff this year, but is he an untouchable? No. Is Marcus Sasser a, a guy that if you have to throw him into a trade to get a starting power forward, or you have to throw him into the trade to get a starting wing, or maybe a better starting two? If you have to do that, is is he like off the table? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Could they even upgrade from Marcus Sasser? They're, right now, they've been playing him as a backup point guard. Is it possible they upgrade from that position? 100%. 100%. Is there a chance, obviously, that he's back on the team next year and in the rotation? Yes, there's a chance of it. But there's also a chance, I believe, that he could be a part of the massive overhaul in the in the in on the roster, I should say, um, or with the roster of uh, this offseason where he's traded somewhere, he's a throwing into a trade to sweep, sweet it up a little bit and get some of the Pistons want. Now you move on to Jay and Ivy. Jay and Ivy, I think, out of all the players, obviously, that played in this game, is the most likely to be here next year. However, is it possible that he gets moved this offseason? Again, we've talked about this many times over the last week, ever since James wrote that article. I talked about it the same day as James' article, where James basically said, that the Pistons look like they're going to have to be, they're going to have to make some decisions on this young court more or quicker than they wanted to, whether it's trade them or bring them off the bench. But if you read the article, it's more insinuated that the Pistons view it as if they are pushed to that, they they believe they'll probably get more value through trade than sitting them on the bench. Like they'll provide more value to this team in a trade than they would just playing a, like 20 minutes off the bench, 25 minutes off the bench. So, is it possible that Jane Ivey's moved? 100%. 100% I think it's possible. Um, so that makes it to where literally every player that the Pistons, that you guys just watched them play, could not be on the roster next year. Troy Brown Jr., Metu, Wiseman, Ivey, Sasser, Tosan, Jared Roden, uh, Evan Fournier, Malachi Flynn, Buddy Beheim, all these guys. The Pistons just played one, two, three, four, five. They just played five players. No, six players, right? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, wait, ten players in this game. They may have just played an entire game of 12 or uh, ten players in the rotation that just won't even be on the roster next year. Like, that's that's how massive this roster overhaul I think is going to get this offseason. Um, again, I won't bet on that happening, but I think it's pretty crazy. I, I Seriously, I think it's pretty crazy that at this point in the season, the Pistons, after what everyone believed preseason, what everyone, what was told to everyone preseason, that we are at a point on March 24th that the Pistons just played 10 guys in a game, and it's possible that not a single one of those guys will be on the roster next year. I think that speaks to how bad the season has went, how bad the roster construction was, how badly the front office failed, how badly the coaching staff has failed, and how badly just the organization has failed. Everyone, themselves, the players, the fans. Like, I, I, if I told you guys before the year, seriously, think about it. Just, just seriously think about it. If I told you before the year that the Pistons will play a game on March 24th this season and all 10 of the players in this game may not be on the roster the following year, I don't think anyone would have believed that. But that's where the Pistons have themselves at. And this is the kind of injury bug the Pistons are dealing with now, too, for, the, like, the fourth straight year for them. They've dealt with injuries every single year. And like I said, some of it may be, we'll find out, but some of it may be just – oh, we're, we're shutting guys down early to tank for the number one overall pick at the end of the year again. Some of it may be that. Who knows? We'll find out. But this is the position the Pistons find themselves again. I don't think any fan, uh, and, and what the front office at least said to the fan base and the ownership said to the fan base, it's not what they expected to be at either. And this is where they find themselves again. Just another markdown 
for why massive changes need to be made at every part of the organization after a season like this. The Pistons are probably about to set the worst record in Pistons history in year four of their rebuild. It's like, it's, it's bad. It's just bad. So I think this is, I just thought this was crazy. I was watching the game like, dude, there's some Pistons fans out there that may be watching this and get literally no value out of it because maybe every single one of these players are gone. Like there may be zero, there may, there is a chance that there is literally zero reason to watch this game. I think that's absolutely crazy to think about in year four of the rebuild. But let me know what you guys think. Comment section down below or over on Twitter at Kuka Hill. When we come back, should fans be worried about Cade asking out anytime soon? We'll talk about that when we come back. PriceFix is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. We are the easiest, most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. You pick more than or less than two six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. It's demon time over on PriceFix. You can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into a thousand. Demon and goblins are the newest and most exciting way to play at prize picks. Squares marked with red demons or green goblins get you different payouts. You can now win up to 100 times your money with as low as four correct picks. And another great thing with prize picks if you have a player playing in a football or basketball game, they get injured in the first half and don't return in the second half, any other place, you're screwed, it's over. But with prize picks, that player is automatically rebooted and trust me anyone who's involved in daily fantasy sports ever knows how big time that is so go to prizefix.com slash locked on nba and use code locked on nba for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars again they go to prizefix.com slash locked on nba and use code locked on nba for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars pick more pick less it's that easy with prize picks so I want to thank you guys again for being locked on Pistons, your first listen of every single day. Free to open on your podcast platforms. Um, hit that subscribe button to the YouTube channel or leave us a five-star review, whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. That's another great way to support the podcast. Um, before we um, before we get into this topic, I do want to say there's something I had said on the last episode that was incorrect. I want to correct that real quick. Um, Quinn Grimes, he is. I, I said that the Pistons may have to decide whether they want to pay him this offseason um, going in blind. I was incorrect on that. James, or not James Wiseman, Quinn Grimes is entering this offseason. The Pistons have his rights. They're not going to have to extend him this offseason. That's next year where they have to make that decision. Just want to come out here and clarify that. I was wrong on that. I I, I misremembered. Um, the Pistons will not have to make – now, they may end up trading him, like that kind of decision. But contract-wise, I doubt that his representation will try to get an extension from the Pistons. And I doubt they'll be interested in giving him an extension after how he may not even play the rest of the year. So – they won't have to make that decision this offseason. That was a uh, misspeak on my end. So just wanted to correct that real quick for you guys. Um, but anyways, it doesn't matter because this, this topic can be short. Should Pistons fans be worried about Kate Cunningham asking out soon? This is something I've had a lot of fans reach out to me and tweet at me and DM me. I've seen a lot of comments in the YouTube section saying um, Kate's going to ask out. Um, I know this season has been really bad, but now I'm just going to give you guys like not. this isn't going to be emotion. This is just basically this is just how the NBA works. There's no way Kay Cunningham's asking out this offseason. There's no way he's asking out anytime soon, I don't think. This offseason, this is how it goes. He is entering year four. This is where he's going to have a rookie extension offer to him. He is going to sign a rookie extension this offseason. I can, I, I, like, it's 99.9999999% chance that he will sign a rookie extension this offseason. When you want to argue about whether it's going to be the rookie max or something below it, you can argue about all you want, but he is going to get a, his rookie extension this offseason. I think it's going to be the rookie max extension five years. I think he's going to get that. So with that, after you sign that, you can't be traded for a period of time anyways. You can't be traded in the same offseason. I believe it's a year until you can be traded on that contract. So now he's not going to ask for a trade this offseason, and he's not going to ask for the trade during the season next year. So that's at least another year. The way that also works is that usually in these situations, if you go throughout all these times where guys ask out and, and, you know, guys ask for trades, what happens is they ask for a trade after they sign these rookie extensions, usually around their age 24 or 25 season. Usually it's like two years into the rookie deal, they'll ask for a trade, they'll ask out. So we're looking at at least, I would say, it realistically, now we're moving all emotion away from it. Pistons fans should not be worried about Cade asking out until around like 26, 20, 2026, 2027 season. Like, that that would be when it makes most sense financially, most sense timeline-wise for a player in his rookie extension to ask out. So I, 
I know it's like funny jokes and you know dark humor to deal with like how bad the Pistons have been this year to say like oh here we go Cage gonna ask out like you know I don't think you it just doesn't make sense for Cade to ask out until then. And also, that's not even taking into account that I do believe Cade wants to be here. Cade wants to win for Detroit. He wants to lead Detroit back. So, I like, it's not it's not something that Pistons fans should be worried about, I think, until, like, 26, 27. Now, the only caveat to that, there, there is a caveat to this, because I don't think any other player that's signed a rookie extension has went through maybe what the Pistons have gone through the last four years. If the Pistons come out next year, like, if this offseason – they don't do anything and they don't make massive moves. And then all, next year it starts off like it, 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 like it's really bad next year. Then maybe the, that time, like may get sped up to a point where maybe it, it is even Kate asking out, maybe new Pistons front office is looking to move some people and just start all over again. Like that's, that's where we're, that's where the, the team would be entering at that point. But I don't think that's, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't think there's a chance of that happening. There's no way after this season that there's that major shakeup won't happen this off season. And that is like DEFCON one, like that's red button, like nuclear warfare kind of stuff like that. I don't think that's likely at all. So I think the most realistic answer to that fans is like, I don't think that should be continued to be brought up. It just doesn't, I don't think it makes much sense right now, unless like the two sides, again, this doesn't usually happen. So the Pistons would have to fumble this pretty damn badly for this to happen. But unless the two sides are just so at, at odds and that you've done pissed off this player and now this player's pissed the front office and now they don't even like each other and now the player just wants out, then maybe, like, it could happen, like, after next year. Like, maybe. Or maybe, like, we've never seen this happen in NBA history. A player doesn't sign the extension. That's never happened. I don't think it's ever going to happen. Like, it would happen, again, like I said, the Pistons would have to fumble the bag, like, historically bad historically bad for the, to get to that point. So, no, I don't think anyone should be worried about Kate asking out anytime soon. Should you be worried about the Pistons ruining that relationship that forces that ask out at some point? Yes. You don't want that to end up happening. That is what should be the concern right now. But should the concern be, oh, if they don't do something, he's going to ask out next year? No, it, that's not going to happen. It doesn't, make, it doesn't make sense financially. It doesn't make sense timeline-wise. So I think everyone can calm down with it, though, like I said, if, the, if you want to have any concern, the concern is about ruining relationship, relationships and trust with the franchise because that's where it starts at. That's where guys like Anthony Davis, guys like, you know, all these guys end up asking for trades. It's not because they hate the city. It's not because they hate the, their teammates or hate the fans. It's because a lack of trust starts to get broke. Like, that starts to happen early on. And all that happens is more and more and more to just what you don't trust at all. And now the relationship is severed. And then that leads to the trade out. So you could be concerned about that, but an actual ask out, like that's no need to be worried. Like that's not going to happen for years, I don't think. Like that, that's not even like an option, realistic option. It doesn't make sense to at this point. So again, like I said, I know it's like a dark humor for a lot of fans like to deal with this season. I completely get it. I, I make the jokes all the time too. It's funny. It's a way to, you know, deal with the, what happened this year. But on a realistic note, I've had some people realistically ask me like, who is this something that could happen? No, it's not going to happen. Um, but anyways, let me know what you guys think. You guys think actually I'm wrong here and Kate could be the first guy ever to not sign a rookie extension and ask out immediately. Like, let me know. Comment section down below or over on Twitter at Cooper Hill. That's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you guys for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen every single day. Free to on your podcast platforms. Hit that subscribe button to the YouTube channel. Leave us a five-star review, whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. And until next time, I will see you guys later. Stay safe out there. And until next time, peace out.